And so grace had both that physical connotation of looking great when you're running, looking like a gazelle, being graceful, you know. But grace is also a, an emotional thing. Grace is also a psychological thing. Grace under pressure. Uh, ben Canute and I were talking about that. And Ben was saying the same thing in triathlon, you know, how, how seldom you win and how much grace that requires, right? You show up, you give everything you've got, and you get your, your butt handed to you, you know, so that required grace. And so when it came to the gratitude thing, before I even knew that, gratitude is one of the key components of getting into flow state. So whether you're getting into flow state when you're racing or whether you're getting into flow state when you're working or designing or creating, um, gratitude is a huge part of that. And it's a, it's basically a stoic message, right? It's about focusing on what you have. It's on being grateful for what you have so that you can move forward. It, it moves to an abundance mentality. It's a hugely encompassing word. And then the last one was, was gut. Welcome to the Run Form Podcast. I'm Bobby McGee, running mechanics expert. And I'm Matt Pandola, your run-specific strength coach. Matt and I have been working together for almost a decade on some of the top athletes in the world, and we've decided to share that process with you guys. Well, welcome back, everyone. We are here talking today about grace, gratitude, and guts. But first of all, Bobby, we just came back from a fantasy camp in Chula Vista. Thought it'd be fun to just chat a little bit about that. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, it just, it, you know, there, there were so many moments, right? So you watch, watch these individuals learning and it was, a, a, you know, allowing, allowing ton, tons of mistakes, right? And so people were doing things that they had n never done before. And yet in, in the group, you had a, a, an age group 70.3 world champion. You had an age group Ironman champion. Uh, and then on the other hand, you had people who couldn't run at all, but were doing aquabike, right? So it was uh, it was the entire gamut, and and I think they you know just how the people gel with each other, right? And and how by by the end of the camp, it's just like they are a gelled unit, right? And which is what you're looking for in a in an environment like that to for people to come from their individual lives and feel like you know team. Yeah, it's a special community, and I was certainly proud to be a part of it. I hope we get to do more together, uh, but I think it leads perfectly well into our topic today, which is grace, gratitude, and, and guts. These these people certainly had all three of those. Uh, I feel like getting to be around these Olympians, you see a lot of these common traits. In fact, we we talked about grace, gratitude, and guts at the Q&A, and I thought it would be good to just, first of all, have you explain grace, gratitude, and guts is a motto that you have come up with and been using for years now. And, and then I've been since then using it as well. But can you explain what that means to you, Bobby? You know, I'm not, I'm not always looking for slogans or taglines or anything like that, but you, you know, you look for a, a subtitle, right? There's, there's various bits and pieces of, uh, of how I learned to create these things. Um, from, from teachers, one of them was Dan Pointer. One of them was, uh, Stephen Covey, you know, how to, how to create a vision and a mission statement and then reduce, 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 reduce until that becomes the, the key of, of what you work around, right? And so I had the run training and I had the run form and I had the sports psychology, right? So those, those were the basic three components of, of you know, how, how I work in the world, what, what my vocation is, right? And so Grace had both that physical connotation of looking great when you're running, looking like a gazelle, being graceful, you know, but grace is also a, an emotional thing. Grace is also a psychological thing. Grace under pressure, you know, being able to deal with victory and to be able to deal with defeat, right? And uh, uh, Ben Canute and I were talking about that, you know, we were talking about watching the, the Netflix thing of uh, uh, full swing about golf. And, and those guys were saying, how seldom they win, right? They they practice so much, they play so much, but they win very, very seldom. And Ben was saying the same thing in triathlon, you know, how how seldom you win and how much grace that requires, right? You show up, you give everything you've got and you get your, your butt handed to you, you know, so that required grace. And so when it came to the gratitude thing, before I even knew that, 
gratitude is one of the key components of getting into flow state. So whether you're getting into flow state when you're racing or whether you're getting into flow state when you're working or designing or creating, um, gratitude is a huge part of that. And it's a it's basically a stoic message. Gratitude, uh, I think the research now showing the power of gratitude is now starting to catch up what we've always instinctively believed that gratitude is about, right? It's about focusing on what you have. It's on being grateful for what you have so that you can move forward. It it moves to an abundance mentality. It's a hugely encompassing word. And then the last one was was guts, right? It's just uh, the realization that to do something that is valueless in terms of a, an economic conversation, right, but is something that is of great value to you internally, to be self-actualized, right, that requires a special kind of courage because it's something that you don't have to do. Mm. That's the whole thing about endurance, right? It's it's choosing a hard pathway for no reason at all, other than to be the best you you can be. And so, to me, that's that's what what guts encapsulated encapsulated. And it's nice to have the three G's, you know, the grace, gratitude, and guts. It rolls easily off the tongue. And it was just one of those serendipitous moments, right? Just writing down things, writing down things, and boom, it pops up, and and there it is, you know. I think just breaking it down into what we how we see things how we see ourselves and how we see other athletes and and i think that's what's kind of cool about about this because when i was working with uh, high school kids in particular i remember having that conversation about just service and if you are in the weeds with school and with your competitions it gets quite heavy on you and I think this is where we start to practice our grace, gratitude, and guts more. It actually allows us to really uh, take some of that weight off, especially when it comes to the, the service part of things. And I would always encourage the kids to do something, whether it be community service or other, that is serving others, being a part of a community, being a part of a culture. In other words, being a part of a team that does mean it's more than just about you and oddly enough that's what helps you um, compete at a higher level i feel like right is that um, that's my interpretation of grace gratitude and guts bobby yeah i i would i would agree matt i mean i think that's a that's a great great summation for, for you know for an individual to figure out how that works i think if i'm Teaching uh, grace, gratitude, and guts, I need to be teaching with grace, gratitude, and guts. And so often the statement becomes uh, writing a motivational uh, piece for an athlete before a race or something and then ending it off with with grace, gratitude, and guts. And so that's requesting grace, gratitude, and guts, and it's being said with grace, gratitude, and guts. So if you go from you know the stoic message that is life, is not about what happens to you, but about what you do with life, then it becomes like a toolbox, right? So in our teaching in in mechanics uh, and also teaching in sports psychology, right, it's about the toolbox. So what what is accessible? So yeah, sure, there's lots of toolboxes where you can uh, theorize about that toolbox, but not get access to it when you need it, right? And so... Um, you know, so like in running, you can quickly do the Velcro drill right in the middle of a race, right? And that's an accessible tool. It's not dependent on your energy levels and so on. You just need to be able to realize the toolbox is there. And to me, grace, gratitude, and guts is the ultimate toolbox, right? In any given situation, you say to yourself, okay, this is going, this is challenging. This is really hard for me. What would be the graceful thing to do? What would be the grateful thing to do? what would be the uh, gutsy thing to do, right? And then you have that toolbox where you can go, okay, I know what guts looks like in a situation like this. That's what I'm going to do. I know what gratitude looks like in a situation like this. That's what I'm going to do. And I know what grace looks like. And I think it's, uh, you know, it's it should be that. It should be a, a life guide in everything that you that you do. Yeah, and I think it's, 
about the small wins too. We saw a lot of small wins during this camp. And uh, for example, with, with Grace, we're literally teaching these form drills. And as you said, it can be the physical, but then it's also within. And I see these people struggling initially to understand the movement patterns, but there were 20 people in a class at a time. And so what I started noticing, I'm sure you did too, is that when somebody started to get it and we gave them that thumbs up, like, that's, that's great. You're getting it now. They started to help other people in the group with that. And I thought that was a good example of, of grace as well. Right. And, and, and that, well, falling right into that gratitude part, right? So they're, they're now starting to implement what they've learned to help somebody else right next to them. I thought that was pretty cool to see that. And so I talk about the small wins here because I think that when we want to get better at these things, it's about recognizing that there's these little wins, these little differences that we are achieving, even if it's just getting something minutely more coordinated and controlled when it comes to the grace, but also exposing yourself to say, okay, hey coach, I I don't quite get this. I, I might even look like I get it, but I don't know what I'm thinking over here, right? You know, I'm a big believer in in saying to people, it's fine to be doing things and it's fine to be doing things consistently. But that's only a small part of the picture. So I think, you know, within the context of this conversation, it's worthwhile defining what true vulnerability is within the modern context of the interpretation, and then also talking about that concept of being, right? And grace, gratitude, and guts are being things. You you have to be graceful. You know, you don't do graceful. You don't do gratitude. You don't do guts, right? You you are gutsy. You are gutsy grateful, you are graceful, right? And so when when people are vulnerable, that, that requires all three of those things, right? It takes a lot of guts to be vulnerable, but there's the only way to move forward, right? And so again, we had that conversation in the camp. Those people that have nothing going on about asking a question that if they thought about it, they would think, oh, that's a really embarrassing question to ask within the context of the knowledge in this room, right? Because everybody probably knows the answer except me, so I'm not going to ask the question. That's being in, you know, not being vulnerable is being invulnerable and then not getting access to the answers. You know, that whole concept of doing is useless. You're not going to get what you want through only doing. You have to do the being part. You have to be the person who does those kind of things and gets those kind of results. If without the being part, you know, then it, nothing happens. And, and grace, gratitude, and guts are all about being, right? So we are not human doings. We are human beings. Well, I like that. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. We're, we're not human doings. We're human beings. I love it. That's a, that's a great, that's a great quote. So just, it reminds me of a couple of things I'd like to touch on to finish this up, but one on the gutsy part, again, it's the small things, but I talked to one lady in the camp when she was doing the uh, transitions, the bike transition with you, and she told me, she said, hey, coach, uh, years ago, actually broke my toe trying to, to do this, and so I'm really nervous, but I'm going to try to do it, and she did it, and she was so excited that, that she was able to, to do it. She put herself through that, and I thought, wow, that's that's so that's so gutsy in itself, right? But on the other end of the spectrum, we had a really nice talk with the Olympians about what they're actually going through when they are taking on those challenges, not seeing them as threats necessarily, but looking at what they can do in their races to get the best uh, on the day outcome and what controlling what they can control. And that I think is an important part of guts as well. I think it's it's really gutsy to be able to stick with your plan, even when everything is going wrong. And, and again, it really all ties in. You have to have grace, gratitude, and guts. But I thought it would be fun to kind of talk a little bit about what we what we learned from that from that talk. You know, firstly, those two athletes, Mikili Jones and, and Ben Canute, they embody grace, gratitude, and guts, right? 
So, you know, everything about the way Ben goes about his business, when you watch Ben race, it's like watching the movie Rocky, right? And then with, with McKeely, just to notice her in those strength sessions, right? She bust a gut. She had a whole lot of things to do opposite us while we were doing our main sessions, right? So she couldn't attend our main sessions because she was working too. But when we had those extra breakout sessions, she made a point to come to those sessions. And the very first thing she did, right, her, her best performance days obviously passed behind her, right? But she's got Olympic gold medal in para. She's got Olympic silver medal in, in regular triathlon. Um, and she's, you know, she's won the world championships in Kona. She's, she's a superstar, right? But she gets down. She gets vulnerable. She wants to do the exercise. She's, she's got no sense of, like, I'm supposed to be on a pedestal. If I attempt these things and fail, I'm, I'm going to be seen, right? I'm going to be exposed. And then when you, when you spoke to the two of them together in a room in front of a group of, of age group athletes, what shows up is this massive competitiveness between the two of them, right? And, uh, <laughs> you know, just being being athletes, right? Just like going... How many times did you win this race? And I won this race and I did this and I did that. And it was, it was very cool to see them being, you know, everything you'd expect from, from athletes that have been as successful as they are. Yeah. I thought it was so cool. Like just saying, McKeeley saying to me, uh, Hey coach, I would love just to talk with you for about 10 minutes about what I need to do. And I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's incredible. Just the fact that she, still at this stage just puts herself in that place where she knows that she can learn more and she she can do better right so I thought wow that's what an honor I said well yeah of course I'll, I'll give you 10, 10 minutes of my time geez I think I'll find the time but you know with with both of these athletes just how they were I think relatable to the other 40 people asking them questions before long I feel like it really that conversation melted into just more of a unit about how we are all just human beings right again so that was really cool to just see that we all have our fears and do it anyway or we can choose to to uh to do it anyways and i i think that that was one of the big things i took from it is that geez we're we may all be at different levels and different goals different times and stages of our lives but we can all benefit and grow from having this this attitude towards how how am I going to get the most out of myself but also raise my entire community around me to really feel like that's more of the legacy I think that we all are trying to live and lead and leave <laughs> uh, yeah absolutely I mean you just look at the level of application I've, I've, I've forgotten the lady's name now but she she holds the world record for uh, going flat out on a bicycle behind a dragster, right? I think it's like 156 miles an hour or something. 183, Bobby. 183 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, that you know, you have to bicycle. see people listening. You're not going to believe it. You have to look it up and see it. It's real. Yeah, yeah. It's absolutely incredible. And yet, when or every session that she was at, complete application. You know, successful in her own right. She's a she's a power athlete, but she wants to do triathlon and she wants to be involved with triathlon. You know, so so somebody that can push, you know, well over a thousand watts on a bicycle, um, but only needs much less than that for a much longer period of time. Willing to apply herself, definitely displaying both when she set the world record and during the during the camp displaying displaying grace, get gratitude, and guts. Yeah, and I think to wrap it up for me anyways, what comes to my mind here was Ben Canute when he was at this camp helping people, doing the swim, bike, the running with them, and then he still has a job to do. So he has to train for his next race. And so you and I were there to help coach him as well. So we found some time. It was hard to do, but we found uh, a couple different windows to work with Ben individually and so he had this he calls it thrimpo session but uh 15 minutes and he did that four times so his hour of power i know you like to 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 refer to there and i was we were talking about how i i was really amazed how he could just so quickly turn it on and do that kind of a session because that that 
that is so tough to just turn that on and do that session and hit your numbers, turn on your gears. And so, you know, again, he's working on that grace physically <laughs> and, and he's, he's looking through, um, a very small window here of opportunity to make minute improvements at this point. And you, with your expert eye, are, are coming up with specific things that he could do for his gait. And immediately after that session, he was all ears and open and not guarded at all, I guess who I'm trying to say. It just amazes me the attitude towards that is there's no questioning what your eye is telling him. He's just now trying to, to learn as much as he can about how to get better. The following day, we actually put those movements together for him. And with those very small details, I just did a session with him yesterday where we're continuing to really focus on those cues to get it really down. But the amount of uh, just gratitude that it takes and uh, the amount of attention to detail he's trying to achieve, I feel like that is such a great example of grace, gratitude, and guts because Again, it's even gutsy to be that vulnerable or to have that mindset where you're saying, hey, I'm second in the world last year, but I, I'm going to listen to these guys and get that 1% that I still need and I don't have any ego in the way. My ego is at the door and this is what I need to do now and I'm, and I'm doing it every day. Uh, so I thought that was a great example of how this really can work to any level and really I'm sure... Ben would say, doesn't matter what level you're at, the these this attitude is what raises you to another level each and every day. Yeah, I remember Ben saying to me he watched the the Netflix uh, version of with the with the tennis right, yeah, and saying how he thought these tennis players were were really quite prima donnaish, right? So he has been driving, I don't know, it's a pretty long drive from where he drove to to get to us, planning when he can fit in the session, walks right off the cool down run, up the stairs into a group photograph where everybody wants individual photographs with him. He's all smiles. He's not out of breath or anything. Here he is completely, you know, playing that part of the role he has to play as a, as a community leader, as being one of its superstar athletes, right? Uh, that's that's grace right there. That's nothing other than grace, right? And uh, you know, his his profuse and rapid messages the minute the camp is over, with with gratitude to everybody who contributed to the camp, right? Uh, where he was the talent, he was the superstar, you know. But he's displaying that that level of of humility as well. And then in the workout, in not perfect conditions, hilly route, maybe he would have done that on a different route had he had more time to think about it and so on that it takes guts to produce the numbers on that on that course right and he was focusing on performance parameters and not outcome parameters and when he when he was done the the performance was there because of the execution because of the plan you know um because he was executing along the way. He wasn't worrying about it until at the end of every rep he'd say, oh, wow, look what that produced, you know? So, <laughs> Ed, you just made some really good points where I was thinking to myself, even including myself, it's hard not to come up with the excuses. It's It's tempting to say, well, I, I had a long drive, guys. Uh, the, the, I've never done this course before. There's all these other variables that I can I can say this is this is why you didn't see uh, a perfect you know execution today. That that's why I I would have done better or my form yep. would have looked better. But it was none of that, and I think that's where um, I remind try to remind myself as well. It's 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 not about the the excuses that are so tempting to give ourselves. It's it's about holding that mindset of grace, gratitude, and guts, so we can get the most out of ourselves, our coaches, our team, our experience. But also, just what comes to mind for me is we, of course, worked with this lady in the camp. Her name was Lisa, and she dyes her head 
red, red, white, and blue, which is, it's amazing. It looks, it actually looks way better than it sounds, but she's, she's such a red, white, and blue athlete. And I texted Ben and I, I said, Hey, it'd be great. Cause those are his colors. And it'd be great if, uh, if you would get her a hat and she told me, Oh no, no, don't bother him. Don't bother him. And this was before he was at the camp. He was, and he said, uh, yeah, yeah, no problem, Matt. And I told her, I said, I, I never hesitate to text Ben anything like that because he's a true sportsman and he really wants to elevate the sport in others. And uh, that's that's why I always be honored to work with a guy like Ben. And Lisa was just through the roof when she got her hat, right? And I think it's just all those little things that reminds me about how we can all be not only just better sportsmen, but just better people. And uh, I think that's what it really encapsulates to, to me, Bobby. Uh, any closing thoughts for you, sir? Yeah, I, I think all I would say there to finish is, is that, you know, when athletes get to that high level, right, they're not really physically necessarily getting any better. They try to become more economical and they're trying to race smarter. And so if I think of the early days, you know, back in, in the mid 2000s, when I first started, when I met, first met Ben as a jun a high level junior triathlete, right, is that constant widening of the parameters under which they are willing to perform. You know, and triathletes are mudders, right? They they mongrels. They can perform in varying environments, and the rules can change, and the conditions can change, right? And so, Ben has become better and better and better at that, right? And I think that that you know, you also looked at McKeeley's mindset was like very different circumstances under which she she had to perform as well and adapt, adapt, adapt. So, you know, that that's what I'd end off with. Every time you do something like immerse yourself, if you have this toolbox of thoughts, right, with something simple like grace, gratitude, and guts, it it doesn't distract you. It narrows your focus to what you can pay attention to, not only on a physical front, but on a mental, emotional front. Yeah, absolutely. And so asking the listener, how can you now execute grace, gratitude, and guts. Thanks for listening today, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care. As always, thanks for listening to the Run Form podcast. And as a reminder, we offer a totally free movement improvement assessment on our Pandola Project website. Here, you can get your own personalized protocol that will help your running today. So give that a try. Also, Bobby and I are experts on any question app where you can ask us, well, any question. So reach out to us directly there. Finally, if you learned anything new today, don't forget to share it with your compadres and leave us a quick review. That really helps us a lot. All the links you need are in the show notes below. Till next time, have a great run.